Hello everyone, in this session we are going to look at the unearned or deferred revenue adjustment. Generally speaking, we like to avoid liabilities. No one, nobody likes liabilities, but in this case, we are going to make an exception. Unearned or deferred revenue is a liability, but it's a good liability. Why? Because to create, to have an unearned or deferred revenue, it means someone else gave you the money up front, the cash, and now you have the obligation to perform the work. That's your liability, the obligation to perform. So you either return the money if you want to remove this obligation or perform the work. Now, as business owners, as a business, no one wants to return money. You want to do the work. And as you do the work, you turn the unearned revenue into revenue. This is one of the liabilities you want to have of as much as possible because it eventually converts into revenue, showing more revenues, more profit on the income statements. It's a sign that your company is growing. Now, in the real world, financial analysts analyze this account for companies very closely for two reasons. One, it helps analysts project future revenues for companies. That's important because the revenues will generate into profit. Profit will turn the stock price higher. Two, this account is subject to fraud, is subject to manipulation. Why? Because companies, what they try to do sometime, and this happens a lot in the real world, they try to prematurely turn the unearned revenue into revenues. How? They, they simply claim that they performed the work. Well, in, indeed, they have not did the work yet, or they did part of it. So they did 40% of the work, but they want to recognize 80% or 90% of the unearned revenue. So this account is subject to fraud all the time in the news. You will hear about it. It's a classic one because it affects revenues. And when companies want, when companies want to cook the books, they look at revenues. And through unearned revenue, it's an easy way because you have the cash in the bank. So it's the job of the auditor to make sure that the company is properly reflecting the amount of revenue they actually earned into revenue. If they have not earned it, it should stay into unearned revenue as a liability until it's earned. Very, very interesting account in the real world. At the end, we'll work a multiple choice question. And don't forget to go to Farhat and work more multiple choice question. Let's go ahead and dive into unearned revenues. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by defining unearned or deferred revenue. Unearned revenue is money, money is cash, received by an entity, an organization, a company, a person for a service. So we have the money now, the money we have it now, but not yet provided or goods not yet delivered. It means we got the money now, we provide the service, the work at a later time. So cash now, you, you do the work later. It's considered a liability. So unearned revenues, don't let the word revenue fools you. It's unearned, it's a liability. Now I wish we can use another word for it rather than unearned revenue, but Unearned. Remember the word unearned? It, it means it has not been earned. And that's a very important concept to compare to earned because earned revenue. When do you earn revenue? When you do the work. So that's why it's called unearned revenue. Now, when the when the company received the un, when when a company receive unearned revenue, it records it as a liability on the balance sheet under unearned or deferred revenue. Simply put, when we receive money, let's assume here for the sake of this illustration, we received cash, 5,000, cash will go up, unearned revenue or remember the word deferred revenue, we could use a deferred revenue, goes up. So this is how we establish unearned revenue. What's going to happen eventually, unearned revenue is earned. 
as the company deliver the, deliver, delivers the goods or perform the service, the liability is reduced and the revenue is recognized. So as we complete the work, unearned revenue goes down. Let's assume we completed the full 5,000 and revenue goes up. So this is the adjustment, those two. We debit unearned revenue and we credit revenue. So this is basically unearned revenue. It starts as a liability and the liability will take place when we debit cash, credit, unearned revenue then as we earn the revenue we debit unearned revenue and we credit revenue let's take a look at our example our example means the trial balance that we are working with to have a complete example specifically we're going to be looking at this account unearned revenue 2250 we received this money earlier during the month now farhat lectures earned 40% of the work paid for in advance and how much was the advanced amount 2250 Farhat lectures did 40% of the work if we did 40% of the work by year end remember the year end is December 31st it means we can earn $900 or we earned $900 we can recognize we can record $900 in revenues why it's 40% of the amount well unearned revenue initially was 2250 now we are going to reduce it by 900 so we're gonna reduce it by 900 we're gonna reduce unearned revenue and increase revenue by 900 so this is the adjustment this is the adjustment therefore the balance and unearned revenue is 1350 be careful because you could you could be asked about the balance what's the balance and unearned revenue after the adjustment, the balance is 1,350. What's the balance before the adjustment? 2,250. So we debit unearned revenues, credit revenues. This is the journal entry. If adjusting entry was not made, if adjusting entry was not made, what would happen? What would happen is this. Your liabilities would have been 2,250 and your revenues will be less 900. Unearned revenues, are overstated or overreported, which is not good because you want your liabilities to be lower. Your liabilities are lower after the adjustments and revenues are underreported. You would not have this additional 900. So companies make sure they book this adjusting entry because they want to reduce their liabilities and increase their revenues. So this is a good, simply put, this is a good adjustments. Companies, they, they make sure they do this, especially when they want to increase their revenues. Uh, so this is one of these funny accounts on earned revenue when you're auditing you have to be very careful about understand the business understand what percentage of the work the company is is completed why because in some businesses this percentage is tricky if you are in the construction business you need specialized engineers if you are in the software you need someone that understand computer science to understand what portion of the project what portion of the software did the company already completed because that's the amount that we need to recognize as revenue now let me show you this from a eventually from the 10 column uh, from the 10 column trial balance this is the unadjusted account we had unearned revenues of 2250 and our revenues was 6300 what we did in this adjustment we debited unearned revenues this is the adjustment we debited unearned revenue and as a result unearned revenue the adjusted balance is a credit balance which is the final balance of 1350 we also credited part of the adjustment credited revenues and obviously revenues went up to 7200 and this is the final or adjusted balance for consulting revenues now eventually we will see all the adjustments all at one page I'm showing you this one at a time so you don't get overwhelmed let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com XYZ software Inc received $12,000 on July 1st 2024 for a one-year software subscription how much revenue should XYZ recognize by December 31st so they pay them the money <clears throat> on July 1st let's look at the entry July 1st on July 1st they will debit cash 12,000 they will credit unearned revenues 12,000 this is July 1st by December 31st and we're gonna assume this is their year end six months later what's gonna happen they earned half of that half of that is 
6,000. How do I know half? Because I'm not told otherwise. Since this is a subscription, subscription expires by time. So we're going to debit unearned revenue 6,000, credit revenue 6,000. How much revenue should be recognized? 6,000. How much unearned revenue remain? Also 6,000. Because we started with unearned revenues we started with 12 we reduced it by six we happen to have six so in this situation the adjustment is six thousand for revenues and the unearned revenue is six thousand it just happens to be so just fyi what should you do now to really understand learn this you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice invest in yourself the adjustments are important for you to understand we still have two more types of adjustments accrued expenses and accrued revenues good luck study hard and of course stay safe